Mary and I met at high school, which is where I also met Amanda and Holly, other bridesmaids. And uh, I just want to say thank you to Mary's mum and dad for uh, playing host to us for so many of Mary's uh, epic sleepovers that we used to have, which other people here may have been part of, so I'm sure that they would like to thank them for uh, being host to us all those times. And uh, I'm sure that you all know that Mary does have these uh, Mary moments, <laughs> which I'm sure you also have an example of. But one of my best Mary moments was when she ended up throwing hot chocolate over a girl in college uh, after Stephen, my other half, ended up uh, pulling her hoodie hood over her head and ruffling her hair, which he did quite often. <laughs> Uh, but that is one of my best Mary moments. Uh, the girl was quite shocked by this when Murray then ran away without even really saying sorry. <laughs> but I have other stories involving Mary from school and college. Uh, one from high school was when, I'm sure many of you have heard this before, but uh, Mary and I were on a jogging field trip together uh, in Norwich and we ended up getting left behind. We'd gone out for lunch and uh, everyone else was sitting down at Castle Mouth and we said to the teacher, is it okay for us to go? And he said, yeah, it's fine. We said, well, where are we meeting? And he said, here. And we said, here? And he went, here. Pointed at the ground, here. We went off. We then came back. There was no one there. We went back to where he pointed to the ground. There was no one there. Mary luckily had a mobile phone, which at this time was rare, because mobile phones, you know, people just didn't have them at that time. <laughs> so we then coordinated a, a rescue plan, calling up to school and her parents, and arranged for her dad to come and pick us up but not before the teacher found us and made us do some more geography field trip work, field work while we were there before we got picked up but if you know Mary you'll have all these stories because Mary can make a trip an adventure and everything can happen with her endless energy so I'd like to say thank you for Mary for being a great friend and leaving me with such unforgettable moments and I hope there'll be many more So, my part is, oh, I've known um, Mary since she joined our form in year 8 of high school and my part of this is just to talk about a few things that I've learned about Mary, um, only a couple, but that you, you may already know about these, if you don't it is now too late, okay. <laughs> it's not too bad. Um, the, one of the best things about Mary is her ability as a storyteller. Um, Every time I meet up with Mary, she has always got a new story to tell, and it's not the way she does it, and I'm sure you'll all have had experience of this, it's, it's not just what she says, it's the way she does it. So, on your tables at the moment, th this is very exciting for Mary, because there are so many objects that she can manoeuvre in order to tell her story, usually about a broken down car, yeah, that's what it usually covers, but she's going to move it to represent the people of the cars and everything, um, which is great, because it can be something really mundane, but she is going to make it exciting. So, Dan, you are never going to be bored, okay, she's always going to have an exciting story. Um, Mary is really positive, she's always enthusiastic and she does an incredible amount of activities which I'm sure you all know. Um, she has an awful lot of energy so I could just say 70 miles and that would be it but I'll, I'll, move, I'll say a little bit more about it. Um, a couple of weeks ago um, all of us, the bridesmaids and Mary, we went glamping and we had a weekend of thunderstorms um, and snoring as well. I'm not going to say who that was, but there's a lot of snoring going on as well. And basically a general lack of sleep. Okay. Um, well, by the end of the weekend, we all sat in front of our tent on, on, on um, I don't know what you call it now, just a, on, a, on some decking. We sat there and we, we were looking out to the field and we were watching Mary. And Mary decided right at the end of the weekend that she was going to have a little bit of a dance um, in the open air by herself because there was some music in a tent just beside us. So she had her own little dance. But the, that, that's a good thing about Mary. She's always enthusiastic. She's always positive. And um, she'll make the time for you. No matter how many other um, things she, schemes she's got going on, she will make the time for her friends and the family, which stands you to in really good stead, I think. Okay? Um, your role, Dan, is a really important one, I think. There is something which Mary really struggles with, decision making. Okay? She, 
We've yeah, spent many <laughs> hours. <laughs> well, well, this is why there's hope. There's hope. We, we've spent hours wandering around, not not making choices on where to go. So we'll wander and we'll chat for ages. So if we we'll go to the city, we we'll go to Norwich, we'll wander around. Neither of us can make a choice of where to go, so we we'll just wander and chat. Um, so you need to help Mary with those decisions because it's not going to change. Um, the only other alternative is you accept that you're going to spend a lot of time wandering and chatting, which is fine. Um, really, that is what I wish for you both. Um, many, many, many hours of happy wanderings with a few exciting stories along the way as well. Um, if I haven't spoken to you tonight already, I'm Vicky and I... Hi everyone! Um, I met Mary... I met Mary just before her birthday in October 2004. So almost 10 years ago, and I met her at university, at Stafford University. And, yes, Stafford. Um, and for those of you who are maybe not familiar, Stafford University, I'll set the scene a little bit, it's very male orientated. I think, correct me if I'm wrong, I think there was 12 men to one female at Stafford. You know, so we had to put up with a lot at university. <laughs> Mary herself, she actually, through, I think the three years at university, she apart from maybe a few, she lived with all men actually, she lived with all men, a couple of them here today, Rich, yeah, she, lived Rich. she lived with Tom, Woo! she lived with John as well, yeah, um, so she struggled through those years with just <laughs> <laughs> um, and one of the great things about Mary that I hold a privilege is that she always says about me, while she had these fabulous girls at college and at school, she always says about me that I was probably her first female friend at university, her real friend. And I, I hold that really dear to me because all the other women at uni were either bonkers or boring. And Mary, quite clearly, apart from maybe her questionable choice in men, she's, she's not bonkers and she is most definitely not boring. She is, in fact, just the loveliest person. She is completely selfless. I think everybody in this room would say that the most genuine thing about Mary is how selfless she is. And throughout our 10 years, our decade together, we've shared many things. We've shared secrets. We've shared an unbridled passion for midnight cheesy chips. <laughs> we've shared holidays to New York with our partner. And we also shared the night that we met Dan as well. Which... Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, wait, we met that didn't meet Dan. <laughs> and whilst I would love to tell you that it was this epic, star-crossed lovers, eyes across the room meeting of fatal proportion, fueled by passion and excitement. To be more accurate, it was a school disco fueled by cheap drinks and tequila. <laughs> and, uh, that, you know, but most, most love stories nowadays always start with tequila, or in Mary's case, a pint of cider. And, um, and so they met, and now we're here. And the great thing about her meeting, Mr Pearson, is that I think all of us, all of Mary's friends, we didn't have to hang out with Mary's, uh, the guy Mary's seeing, and we didn't have to hang out with Mary's boyfriend, and we didn't have to hang out with Mary's fiancé. We hang out with Dan, because... Dan is our friend as well. We made a really good friend in Dan, and so a little cheers to you. This doesn't mean I like you, and don't try and hug me later. <laughs> I'm being nice to you on your wedding day. Um, and so, yeah, I just wanted to say that, you know, we've had a fabulous ten years together, and that's my memory of Mary and Dan. I'm Holly, uh, maid of honour. Um, I've never spoken into a microphone before, so this might go completely wrong. I'll try not to. Um, basically, being um, known Mary for nearly 20 years now, um, she's entertained me with her humour, um, her sense of adventure, her independence and selflessness. And it was funny because we both wrote that separately. So, <laughs> um, Being Mary's maid of honour is no small task. She has been or is going to be bridesmaids for all of us here. <laughs> so she knows how it's supposed to go. So when presented with the, the challenge of writing a speech, I was worried, what should I say? I know so many things, probably most I can't say. So I thought, instead of choosing one of her antics or her stories, 
um, I thought I'd pass on my wisdom. Uh, Mary was my maid of honour five years ago, and in that time, I think I've developed a formula for, su for a successful marriage, or what I think is su successful, with the help from my husband. <laughs> so, it might not be right. <laughs> So, when I asked my husband what he thought needed to make a successful marriage, he said, early onset deafness. So, I don't know. Hey. 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 So, I did ignore that as well. So, I kind of agree. Um, so, for this, I got you a little present. Okay, so the first thing you need to do is listen to each other. So Dan will hear you, here's a megaphone. <laughs> Can't get away with it now. I haven't got any batteries in at the moment. <laughs> okay, so number two was make time for one another, have patience, and when things are trying, remember the good times, and this is to help. It's a clock. <laughs> if you open it up. Thomas, the same as your watch. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I feel like Santa. <laughs> I don't. Oh, good. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> in a bit of a rut, especially if you've been married for a couple of years, everything's getting a bit dull, shake things up a bit, get out of routine, this is to help you feel loose. It's not PG. It's cocktail shaker. And last but most importantly, have fun, laugh with and at each other as often as possible. And um, this is the one person you can annoy for the rest of your life, so it's great. I do it all the time. Um, so this might help. You can all have a look at it later. <laughs> Don't be afraid. And if you forget all of those points I've just said, then those gifts might make a fantastic first date night. <laughs> okay, um, I've just got a few thank yous. I'd like to thank Mary for choosing me as maid of honour. She's got amazing friends, so, you know, it must have been quite tough. So, I, I you know, I do feel honoured. Um, it has been fun, and I'm really sad that actually she's got married because I had so much fun and doing all the Hindus. <laughs> we need to have more chance to do stuff. <laughs> um, the other thing is, I want to thank Dorothy, this is uh, Dan's nan, for helping honorary mate, uh, bridesmaid. She helped um, make some of the food for later on today, so uh, she's done a really good job. And um, all the bridesmaids for making. So can please, can everyone raise um, their glasses and join me in toasting Dan and Mary on starting their new adventure with love and happiness to Dan and Mary. Dan and Mary. Dan and Mary.